Only in the last 100 years has the human race begun to ask the question, were we always human? It was not until 1973 when an anthropologist happened to look down at the crumbling soil of Ethiopia that we achieved a new look at our past. A single broken bone can sometimes be a time machine. Did it transport us to a moment when the link between man and ape walked the earth? The Great Rift Valley of East Africa extends a thousand miles to one of the most desolate spots on earth, the Afar Triangle. In 1973, a French-American team began to search the area, which they suspected could be rich in pre-human fossils. What they found may have pushed the story of humanity back to three and a half million years ago. October. Don Johansson was leader of the American team. This reenactment, based on his book, Lucy, shows how he literally stumbled onto the first of three amazing discoveries. The bone seemed to be the shin of a small primate. Upright walking humans had never been found in soil this old. Soil which team geologists had dated to three and a half million years BC. He carefully marked and catalogued the spot. Johansson spotted another bone. Couldn't believe his luck. Fossil limbs are extremely rare, and his two fragments fit into a perfect knee joint. What he noticed next took his breath away. He knew that the knees of apes meet in a straight line, human knees at a slight angle. This knee looked almost human. That evening, Johansson and one of his graduate students snuck outside of camp to a nearby Afar burial mound. Johansson kept insisting he had to find a human femur for comparison. The student was worried. The Afar zealously guard their ancestral mounds. If the anthropologists were caught robbing graves, they might be shot, or worse. Luckily, inside the mound was a modern femur. Except for size, the bones were almost exactly the same. They respectfully replace the femur. From the knee joint alone, Johansson suspected the unknown creature walked upright. His subsequent discoveries were to revolutionize our beliefs of when the first human walked the earth. The following year, Johansson returned to the Afar with a larger group. The digs began to yield dramatic finds prehistoric hippos, crocodiles, the huge skull of an extinct mastodon. Meanwhile, the painstaking search continued for human ancestors. They would have considered themselves lucky that season to find a single pre-human bone. That's why the events of late November were unbelievable. Johansson hit his second streak of luck. Crossing down a small gully, he spotted a bone. And another. They pulled out a vertebrae, part of an arm, and more. Had they found King Solomon's mines, the scientists could not have been more overjoyed. What they dug from the dry soil would eventually bring them fame, scientific acclaim, and a backlash of controversy that continues to this day. For they had found a full-grown woman, three and a half feet tall, weighing 50 pounds, 
a woman who was not quite human. Dr. Johansson and his colleague, Dr. Tim White, analyzed the fossils and later named the new species. Well, what we see here is, is one of the most remarkable discoveries that's ever been made in the study of, of human, human origins. We have a, a skeleton which is about 40% complete. Normally, we're happy when we find a bit of a jaw or a bit of an arm. And here we've got leg, parts of legs, parts of arms, parts of the skull, nearly a complete lower jaw. And she's popularly come to be known as Lucy. To anthropologists around the world, she's known as Australopithecus afarensis, or the Afar ape man. And she represents for us the oldest, most complete human ancestor known from anywhere in the world. What Lucy shows us is a creature that was a mosaic creature. Her hip, her knee, her foot would have been very human in appearance. And yet when we look to parts of her face, represented here by her lower jaw, we find that it's very protruding lower portion of the face. We have portions of her brain case, and they show that the brain was very, very small. Smaller even than some modern chimpanzees. We have been looking and are always looking for various links in the evolutionary chain. And one of the interesting links in the evolutionary chain, which has been filled by the discovery of Lucy, is this intermediate form. That is to say, we've got a form that's fully upright, walking on two legs, just as modern humans do, but still has a lot of evolutionary change uh, necessary to make it truly human in the teeth, and the face, the jaws, and the size of the skull. So here we have essentially found a very interesting and provocative link between something that was, was partly human and partly ape-like. What did Lucy look like? No record of skin color or hair density remains. This reenactment is one possible interpretation. In the hostile environment around primitive African lakes, frequented by large predators, Lucy's upright walking may have offered a new talent for survival. For the first time in primate evolution, the hands were free, hands which were shaped just like ours. assume that these hominids were at least as intelligent as a modern chimpanzee but we can't assume that they were more intelligent or that they had speech or anything like that because we don't have any record of their tools uh, we don't find a stone tool record until much later in time much younger than Lucy the upright walk of a human the strength and agility of an athlete and the brain of a chimpanzee. Could Lucy talk? Could she reason? Could she remember the past and plan for the future? According to Johansson and White, not very much. The talent for stone tool making would not come for another million years. In that sense, Lucy was still an animal. all scientists agreed with this interpretation. A year after the Lucy find, Johansson was again in the field, seeking more evidence, and again he struck gold. A movie crew was present when his team unearthed an entire pre-human family, at least a dozen who somehow perished together. In the years since this monumental discovery, scientists are still arguing its meaning. Some experts claim the bones represent not one, but three species. That Lucy was completely human. That Lucy was a knuckle-walking ape. That Lucy's family evolved into humans. The controversy continues. If Lucy is our predecessor, and if the date of her life and death and three and a half million years is correct, this little creature, who lived without speech or reasoned thought, would be the ancestor of me, of you, of all of us. 200,000 generations removed. 
One million generations before Lucy, fossil fragments have been found of little primates called Ramapithecus. The theory of evolution claims these monkeys as our ultimate ancestors. A few footprints in Texas rocks, however, might prove that Lucy doesn't belong to us at all, that evolution is wrong and the Bible right. If the theory of natural evolution is correct, then the Earth must be very old. What scientists call the geologic column is layer after layer of rocks built up over time. A slice through this birthday cake would expose four billion years of slow change. Human bones would be found only in the very top, and dinosaur bones only in the middle. 